This program is brought to you by the City of Fountains Coaches Association. Awesome with Cascade Sports. Uh, we're here uh, with the head basketball coach of uh, Harris Stowe uh, University. Who do we have here? Coach Breon Dunlap. Hey, Dunlap. Uh, what I do uh, traditionally want, to, want you to run it down uh, from the time you first fell in love with basketball and uh, give the coaches and the mentors they propers that help you build your skill set. And we got all the time in the world. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, I, I would say I first fell in love when I was around seven. Um, seven Close years of age. A little bit because your head is, yeah, yeah, right there, right there. Okay. I, I fell in love with around like seven years old, um, just just playing in the rec league, playing in school. Um, I was where fortunate. You, where was you playing? Where are you from? So I'm from I'm from Northern Virginia, Woodbridge, Virginia. We're like 20 minutes outside of DC. Um, so the, the DMV, as we call it. Um, but um, you know, I went to an elementary school at Baldwin Elementary. Um, well, we had a, a a program where we had the elementary schools that were coached. I mean, elementary kids. We were coached by the high school players. So I had some 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 pretty good guys that we looked up to as youngsters that we would go see on the high school on Friday nights that they were coaching us during the week. So that made for a fun experience because it, it kind of felt like we were um we were a part of them. And then when we came to their games, you know, they would show us love and things of that nature. So it, it was fun. Uh, it trapped me in. You know, my first love was football, though. You know, that was my that was my sport. That's what I wanted to play. I wanted to be a professional football player. Um, but then I fell in love with the game of basketball, too, and just um, just seeing the, the the excitement of my teammates make plays or I make plays and, and um, just showing that love for one another. And, you know, I was taught by, by a bunch of really, really ahead of their time type of coaches, in my opinion. Um, Run their football. names down. Give them their props. And as I'm talking to you, let me tell you, I went to Virginia State in uh, Petersburg for a yeah. year. Then I transferred to Central State. So I know all about your area. And I lived in Laurel, Maryland. Okay, okay, for yeah. sure, for sure. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't want to miss anyone. But, I, you know, just going down the line, one of my, my, my first coaches, uh, one of my first coaches in Little League, um, like I said, when we were playing in the, in the elementary school, was this guy named Chris Green. Um, he was a big time player at Osborne High School, which was a local high school. Um, and he was one of my guys that I looked up to and I still, you know, talk to from time to time um, to this day on social media. Um, one of my one of my younger rec league coaches, um, Coach Plybon, you know, rest his soul, you know, he was a real big fundamental guy. Um, he taught me how really to to be an unselfish player and and um, really to get my teammates involved and try not to show too much emotion. If you're playing with the with the player that isn't on the same caliber as such as yourself, um, um, uh, Brad Johnson, um, he was like a father figure to me. Um, he and his his son and I we grew up together, and you know rest rest in peace as well. But he taught me a lot of things, you know, on and off the court, uh, you know, just how to conduct myself on and off the court and things of that nature. Um, then when we get to the middle school um, and AAU. You know, I didn't. I didn't really play for any big, big time AAU programs. And what I position kinda, did you play, Coach? I was point guard. I was point guard, and I was also a quarterback on the football field. So I, I appreciate distributing the ball, and and you know, back in those days, you know, we we were floor generals, um, and, and we were extensions of coaches. So we we were pass first more so than anything. And then once those, once my teammates, you know, got some success from from receiving my passes and things of that nature. That's what I love, you know. Um, that's why one of Mag Magic Johnson is one of my favorite players, simply because of when they were Showtime Lakers and growing up in the '80s. Like, you know, you, you see the pure joy that he had when he played the game. Uh, another one of my guys was Maurice Cheeks, who played for the '76ers. Um, that's why I wore the number ten, actually, um, because All of right. Mo Cheeks. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't know about Mo Cheeks. He don't get a lot of credit that he that he deserves. But. Hey, those are young boys don't know nothing about <laughs> that, man. <laughs> but he, he was a, he was a big time player, man. He was a dog, real big I, time I, player and a big time coach. Yeah, yes, and I and I appreciated everything he did for sure. 
Uh, you know, and then just going – when in high school, um, I, I played for a coach named Will Robinson in Woodbridge High School. Um, you know, Coach Rob is a, is a father figure to me as well, a mentor. Um, I think he's one of the best coaches on any level, and I'll put that up against anybody any day of the week. Um, you know, he taught us a lot of things on and off the court, you know, how to be young men, how to present ourselves, um, how to carry ourselves. But he also taught us how to win and be successful, and not just in basketball, but in life. Um, you know, and, and we and I carry a lot of those those teachings um, to this day for sure. And then um, my college coach, you know, Coach Cable, um, rest in peace to him as well. Um, you know, he he taught us how to be men. You know, he he was a tough love type guy, but he taught us how to be men. And it's some you know sometimes when you're going through it, you don't really appreciate it until after the fact. Um, and, and, and now down the road, you know, I appreciate the lessons that he tried to bestow upon us and what he did for us. Um, and my coaches and the coaches that were on that staff as well. When I was at Old Dominion, that's where I played in college basketball, Old Dominion University. So, um, you know, all those guys have, I take a little bit of everything that they have taught me or tried to teach me along the way, um, whether it be good or bad, um, and, and, and try to apply that to my, to my program and my players and my relationships that I've cultivated over the years of being in this college game and in coaching in general. How long um, have you I think been coaching, coach? This, this, um, you know, in general. Um, Lord willing, going on to this year, this will be my 23rd year of coaching. Damn, you look like a baby yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good genes, I guess, good genes. Yeah. But, you know, it, this will be my 23rd year and this will be my, this will be my 18th year coaching in college. So, and this will be my fifth year um, at Harris, though. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I've, I've had some experience, um, been around some really, really great teachers and mentors. And just, you know, one of my mentors um, that, that helped me get into the college game, Milan Brown, um, he was an assistant coach for me for two years when I was at Old Dominion. And once he got a head coaching job in college, I, I left my high school job to go be his assistant. And where was that at? That was at, it started out at Mount St. Mary's University in Maryland. And then uh, we went to Holy Cross um, University, I mean, Holy Cross College in Massachusetts for seven years, I mean, for five years. So we were at Mount St. Mary's for seven and Holy Cross for five. And he brought and, you right along with him. When he moved, yeah, you moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he's always been like a, he's always been, like I said, not only a mentor, but he's almost been like a big brother figure to me. Um, you know, we've, we've known each other for a while, known of each other, just for the simple fact that I used to play against his. His, his, his brothers when we were younger, growing up in the AAU days, you know, they, they were products of the Boo Williams basketball farm system. Um, so we had a lot of battles with them. Um, but, you know, he, 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 he taught me, he's taught me a lot of things as well. And I lose a lot of principles and, and a lot of morals and things of that nature that, that he established with his programs that I, I try to convey with mine as well. Hey, hey coach, one thing that, uh, in your conversation that uh, is a common thread uh, is that the coaches that mentored you and helped you build your skill set, it was larger than basketball. It was sure. building a skill set outside of basketball. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, that's why my company really is featuring HBCUs because the nurturing effect uh, of these schools uh, and uh, you don't have to fit in because all these people come from the same background as you. Right, right. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I would ask you is, uh, man, it's acting like he wants to admit you again into the, into the conversation on a different uh, line. But uh, coming out of, uh, oh, this, this is coach, this is, this is the head coach of Lincoln Prep coming in. Are you there, coach? Okay. Yeah, sorry I'm late, fellas. I had a, uh, another Zoom meeting that they wouldn't stop talking. And it went over too long. <laughs> it's all good, coach. <laughs> hey, 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 coach, you know about Lincoln Prep here in KC. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. the head basketball coach and the athletic director over there. Okay, okay. All right. How you and doing, coach? Nice to meet okay. you, my man. You as well. You as well. Hey, right? hey, 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 uh, Ryan, it's yes, time sir. for you to take over. Oh, well, I'm right on time then, man. I'm glad I missed all, 
I'm glad I missed all your babbling. Then. <laughs> Coach, I appreciate you being on, man. Again, sorry I'm late, man. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're just trying to create a network here. Um, you know, coaches, I know you know about Lincoln Prep and, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, how academically it is. But we got some great things going on athletically. Uh, and we want to connect with coaches like yourself, man, because we got kids, uh, you know, that are flying under the radar. And, uh, you know, we want to get to quality programs, uh, you know, straight through a network where, you know, I mean, you and I build a relationship. And, you know, if you need some guys or you need a position or something like that, if I don't have them, then I know somebody up here that does, and I can send them your way. So definitely, definitely. I appreciate you being on. I appreciate uh, you having me. No problem, Coach. But just uh, like I always ask everybody on these calls, tell us about Harris Stowe. Tell us about your program. Um, you know, what exciting things you guys got going on right now and how you guys are kind of dealing with the recruiting uh, issues with the uh, virus and how that's, you know, everybody's kind of in the same ball game with that. How are things going for you guys with that? Well, first off, uh, from a program standpoint, uh, we're, we're coming off our third championship in four years. Um, you know, it's 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 been a it's been a really good run thus far. Uh, we've I've been blessed to have some some really hungry kids um, that that have a chip on their shoulder and, and want to prove something. But they also not only want to they want to learn and grow as as young men as well. Um, that's been the best part, I, I think. The main thing. I mean, the championships have been great, but just to see the growth that these young men have have come from day one to the end of the season, um, it has been remarkable. Um, and just trying to see them a bigger picture. You know, some of us can be, you know, depending on with some of the dynamics and backgrounds where our guys come from, you know, they can they can stay stuck, not only physically but mentally. And, and you know, and it's our job to try to enhance and and, and, and build their minds and, and think they outside the box, so to speak. Um, but, you know, from a, from a program standpoint, like I said, you know, third championship in four years. Um, my first year we won a championship was the first time in school history that men's basketball had ever won a championship. Um, we've also had four straight winning seasons. Um, we've averaged out 20 wins a season the last four years. Um, you know, so we're proud of that. Our guys are doing better and better in the classroom, um, you know, because there, there was a point in time where, you know, th they didn't come to school for really for the academics. You know, we're trying to change that, that mentality as well and understand that, yes, I know you're trying to get that paper, but we need that real paper too, which is that diploma and that degree. Um, we got to make sure we get that done. And no matter how long it takes, whether you're on a two-year plan, three-year, four-year, five-year, Let's just make sure we have, we have a plan to get it done. Um, and that's the one thing that we're trying to continue to convey to our guys. Um, you know, with us being – us and, and Lincoln University being the only two HBCUs in the state of Missouri, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good for us because of where we are from a location standpoint, being in St. Louis, but right across the street from St. Louis University. Our guys have a pretty good relationship with those guys as well. So, you know, during the summer, the competition is really – really, really thick and really good and it allows everyone to grow um, through competition. And that was that was one of the biggest things that I that I put my stamp on and I tried to get here is like we're just gonna be ultra competitive, you know, on and off the court. I want us to compete in the classroom, I want us to compete on the on, on the floor as well. And just to be competitive in life, man. Let's try to be successful in all aspects and all walks. And even if we have hiccups, let's pick each other up and be there for each other to make sure we continue to go forward and grow forward, to be honest with you. Um, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, it's, you know, with us being NAIA, we have our rules, but we can do a little bit more than what they can on the NCAA side. So, I mean, it's hurt us in the sense of not being able to see people with our own eyes, um, but, you know, the contact and, and, and now I think it's more so you just really have to trust your eyes and what you see on tape and, right. and, and learn as much as you possibly can about the, about these student athletes and, and see if they are willing to, or you're willing to, um, to give them that opportunity um, simply because, you know, we understand that we all going to miss. You're not going to make a hundred percent right choices with every kid you decide to bring into your program, but you can always be a hundred percent on trying to help a kid, whether he's the right fit or not, um, whether that means giving them to another program or assisting them to another program, so on and so forth. But in recruiting piece, the lucky part for us this year, we don't have to bring in a lot, <laughs> you know, we had, we had a, we had a kid sitting out who was going to fill the huge void. Now, we got a commitment early from another wing, like during the course of the year. And then now we just, we're looking to try to find a big that can protect the rim. Um, and if we can do that, then we'll be done. So we can be kind of picky and we can wait. 
um, and, and bringing the right fit for our program. So that's the, that's that's a fortunate piece for us. The last few years, we've we've had to bring in six or seven guys each and every year. So now it's you know with us only having to bring in one, um, two, I should say, um, it it makes a lot things a lot easier. It makes things a lot, easier, especially during these times, for sure. Right. So tell us. Tell us about, you know, style of play. You know, we'll have a lot of kids that we'll put this out to on our, on the network. A lot of kids, a lot of moms, dads, families will re re watch these videos um, in hopes to, you know, try to find a good fit for their kid. And, you know, I always encourage um, all the parents as an athletic director to do their own research uh, on sure. the programs. Uh, don't just do it with the AAU coach or your high school coach or, you know, what somebody says, you know, do your own research uh, with the coaches and the program and the environment. What's the, what's the style of play for Harris Stowe and what you got, what do you guys do? What do you guys look to do uh, when you guys coming in? What kind of, what kind of kids do you like? Well, um, style of play, we're, we're, we're very versatile. Uh, we can adapt to any style. Um, I, I, I had a compliment from a coach this past year that told us, he felt that we we play like a pro style, like we had a pro style type team where we could we could play fast, we could play slow, we can play ISO, we can run sets. Um, so our versatility has kind of been our strength, especially every, every year since I've been here. Um, you know, in today's so quote unquote positionless basketball, you know, we try to move people around and and we try to find the go at. To be honest, which we play a game as mismatches. Um, this past year, we 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 had. We had a couple of guys on our team that were pretty much a mismatch every night. So, you know, those were our go-to guys. But the one thing I try to stress to our guys is this. If you put in the work and if, it, and if you're open and it's your shot, shoot it. If it's not, pass it to somebody else to get the best shot so they can shoot it if it's their shot. So we really stress on sharing is caring. Um, that's because that's the way I was as a player. You know, I was, I was a facilitator. So I like for our guys to share the basketball. But also want you to to have the confidence and 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 the confidence in your work that you put in. Like, listen, if I feel like I have a mismatch and coach trusts me, then I can go at that guy and 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 make a play. Now that means either for myself or somebody else on the team. But I want us to have guys that are that are good decision makers, are able to make plays, and are willing to share that wealth, um, as we say as well. Um, so, but we want to play. You know, I I want to say breakneck up tempo. But we like to play with a, with a good pace. Um, we like to use a lot of space. Uh, we we do run a lot of ball screens. Um, but that don't mean if that's not your strength, I'm not going to put you in that situation to do that. As a coach, my job is to make sure I I, I accentuate your strengths and, and and try to match your weaknesses. And if that's not what you do, then I won't put you in that situation. But if you're a good guy that's coming off screens with pin downs and things of that nature, then we're going to try to do something for you in that manner as well. Um, so we just try to really. I just try to play to the strengths of my players. Uh, with us, we're, we're very we're limited from a, from a scholarship standpoint. So, you know, I, I don't really try to go for to pinpoint any particular type player. Um, I just want guys who are coachable. To be honest with you, and as we say, you got to have a a motor that stays on. Like we don't need an on off switch. We need to be broken and just stay on. Um, and we need that competitive switch always to be on. So, um, I tell guys all the time, I, I'm not a prophet. I can't tell you how many minutes you're going to play or what you're going to do from a point standpoint or a shot standpoint. All I can tell you is this. If you come here uh, to our university, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And then you do what you do, what you, you do what you kind of want and need for, with that opportunity. And then that will help me dictate how we can play, um, so to speak. Uh, I mean, I, I, I watch buku amounts of film and things of that nature, and we all got these ideas of grandeur and what we're going to do going into the next year. But – you know, it don't always work out that way, um, you know. And so I've, I've kind of, I guess, in a way, I've kind of grown from that. I mean, because I, I was born originally in North Carolina, so I'm a Carolina fast break guy. You know, I'm a Tar Heel, like, let's go do it. But, you know, I've had to change my ways um, in that sense because that I, I'm not going to have that personnel. So we got to play according to what we have and what our strengths are. Gotcha. But the, the one thing that's a non-negotiable, you got to be a guard, though. Like you, you, you have to be at a guard, and 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 I don't mean in the sense that we're going to play in a style that you know our 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 scores are going to be low. So I understand our points for possession could be high, and the possession in the game could be high. Your effort defensively has to be there. You know, we ain't gonna hold nobody to zero points. You know, like the game of basketball, 
it includes points. People are going to score, but it's right. just the way it, it's the way they have to go about being able to score. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, for for a kid that you know in the next couple of years, 2021, 2022 season, you know, might feel like they're kind of flying under the radar and you know don't really have a lot of looks. What would be your advice, um, you know, for that kid uh, to use a platform to you know to get themselves in a in a position where they can come play for a program like yours or you know, get themselves on a platform where they can get recruited and uh, get, get, find a home to play? Well, the first, the first thing I would say is, you know, trust your work and the work you put in and believe in that. And then the second thing I would say, you know, from a, from a, from a, from a cliche standpoint is don't check another man's pockets, right? So don't be worried about what everybody else is doing and what everybody, who else is recruiting all these other kids. Like at the end of the day, you can control your effort and your attitude. Those are the two things you can control each and every day when you get up in the morning. So how you go about that and, and putting that work in and, and, and trying to get better, and those are the most important things. I mean, if you don't, and don't have any um, undue distractions, meaning take care of what you need to take care of the classroom. So that's one less thing you got to worry about when it comes down to if it is choose player A over player B. Player A has the grades and the talent, and player B just has the talent then, you know, most likely you're going to go with player A. So make right. sure you do those other things that don't hamper that, that, that those opportunities as well. Um, put yourself in the best situation you possibly can. Work on your game. Um, if you can, get out. Um, make yourself available to these coaches, whether you're playing AAU or not. You know, you can always reach out to a coach, send them an email, send them a film. And it doesn't even have to be about film or about playing. It could be about I'm just reaching out. You know, it's almost like you're just trying to network. Um, I believe in today's with today's social media and how easily we are connected or can be connected to one another. I think that student athletes can use that as a tool. Um, you know, with us, the, the full circle back to the recruiting. One of the big pieces that we use is Twitter um, to be able to get in contact and follow kids, things of that nature. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot. It's it's a lot more um, resources and things that are accessible to you. That can make your that can make yourself accessible to these coaches as well, and don't like I said, don't feel to the point where you're comparing yourself to someone else, even if you're on the same team with them. Like if, right. if, if 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 my teammate over here is getting recruited by these schools, and I'm feeling a certain type of way that I'm not, don't just keep working. You right. know, I, it's the same thing that I say on with the guys on the collegiate level that have aspirations of playing after college. The more we win, and the more successful we are the more eyes you're going to get brought to your program. Right. So, you know, so don't do anything that's going to put um, any adversity or, or hamper your, your opportunities of success. And same thing from a high school kid standpoint, if you're feeling like you're under recruited, don't pout about it. Just go out and work harder, you know, right. work harder, get in the gym and, and find ways to get yourself um, and your teammates accessible and available to others. Cause the more people that come watch, the more people on your team, the more opportunities you're going to have in front of you. You know, exactly. and um, Coach Glasgow, you missed out. His, his main people was Magic Johnson and Mo Cheeks, and right. he played guard. He was more into if you listen to his conversation and distributing the ball. Right, I was the same way, Coach. So you know what I mean, and that's the way I coach my high school kids. You know, make the extra pass. Yeah. You know, um, the ball, the ball has a way of finding its way back around to you when you do that. For sure. For sure. I'm a big Lakers guy myself, so Magic was definitely my guy. Uh, hey man, you know, the heck with you! I'm from the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you a New York, you a New Yorker, man. So you know that's 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 the way it should go, man. I grew up in Missouri, so we didn't have a pro team. You know what I mean? When I was coming up, other than the Kings, when I was very young, but For then sure. they they jumped ship on us. So you know, I, I gravitated to the Lakers squad. But I agree with you, Coach. I mean, you know, the culture of uh, you know social media, and I think that you know that kind of affects kids. Cause they see so much. I'll offer this. I got to offer this. I got to offer that. You know that they're so concerned about levels, um, yep. what level they play. And my thing is, is always, you know, at the end of the day, there's still small percentages that get to go on and play at the pro level. So mm -hmm. you can only control that once you get to whatever level you're going to get to. You know, just uh, touch on that. How you feel about the, you know, the whole. Well, if it's not D1, it's not D2. Then you know all of that. Because uh, I played NAIA basketball, Coach, mm -hmm. so I, I know you how competitive that is. You uh, Glasgow. I know how competitive that is for, uh, you know, for, for 
a basketball. I mean, we 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 had some dogs. I mean, we had yes. some serious competition. Yes. Talk about levels and how kids, you know, I mean, you know, when they look at that, how they should really view NAIA or, you know, all the levels that, that are that are out here. Well, the, the, the first thing I, I would comment on is to say that, you know, I was I was a Division One assistant coach for 12 years. Um, I was a Division Two assistant for a year, and then this would be my fifth year on the NAIA level. Um, and the one thing that I would say is this, like, at the end of the day, beauty is in the high to behold it. So if a coach loves you and he likes you, then that's what he loves and he likes. If he likes a particular type player, then that's what he's going to go for and that's what he's going to want his assistants to recruit and so on and so forth. But, you know, the one thing that I that I had I had heard about but not I hadn't seen was the 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 level of player and the caliber of player that was on the NAIA level. Um, and until our first year and we made it to the national tournament, you know, that was – that was kind of like an eye-opening experience for me um, to see, like, you know, these are all, you know, really, really good players <laughs> that, that, that are playing on this level, that are on teams on this level, um, and that are, that are competing night in and night out. And it, it made us and it made me have to think about which way we needed to go from a recruiting standpoint, to be honest with you. Um, you know, a lot of the teams – you know, especially with what I call the free agency of college basketball these days with kids leaving here and there. Uh, you know, we played a team. They had six Division One transfers on their roster. You know, that was part of their seven, eight-man rotation was with six Division One transfers. And then you're thinking about those type teams as well that, you know, the unbalance in the NEI ain't the only thing that is, you know, as bad as the unbalance of scholarships from school to school. Um, so, you know, the, the, the wealthy, so to speak, that have the that have the full allotment of scholarships, you know, they're gonna have a little bit deeper team, or their rotation could be smaller, but they could be a little bit different caliber of player um, that they were able to bring in, and so on and so forth. But and then they could also bring in high school kids where they can they could develop them um, due to their due to their scholarship situation. Um, right. But the le- the level, I mean, I'm always I've always been an advocate of you if you can play, you can play, you know, and and um levels are only separated at at the highest I, uh, so 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 on and so forth like when you have you know a, a quote unquote blue chipper he's a lot different than a kid that's going to be a, just a really good high school player you know an, an elite you got elite players then you have good players and then you have not so good players but other than that you know i think everyone is kind of there's more in the middle of good players than it is from an elite standpoint um and so i think it's just a matter of um when you not worrying about the level and just really, like I said, once again, go back to trusting your work and believe in who you are um, and then shine on any level that you happen to fall on. Um, right. Cause at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we, I had a player on our team this past year, you know, some would argue he was the best player in the country. You know, and I would argue that, that he was the best player in the country. Could he play mid major to probably high major division one basketball right now? Yep. He sure can. Um, but those are the caliber of players that we have even at the NAI. And I think it's more so of just people not knowing, you know. Right. So as coaches, you know, as part of us, our job to continue to, to, to educate the kids, um, student athletes, as well as the parents as, as best as possible so then they can make the best decision going forward um, with, their, with their college careers. And I think some of that has been lost a little bit, and I think that's the reason why we do see – the, the the transfers as much as possible. I'm not sure that we are communicating with everyone that's in the circle right. um, as much as we probably need be. So then everyone feels like, because that's when you know that you pick the right place when things are going bad. You know, right. when when things are going bad and, and I can, and and you having and you having this this a bad day or bad times, but you know I'm in good hands and I, that's when you know you're at the right place. But I don't know if if that's being communicated well enough and and everybody's just looking for the next best thing, you know. So, um, you know, from a level standpoint, like I said, the elite are the elite. We understand who they are. But everyone else, you know, just just be the best and be the star in the role and the place of where you are, you know. Um, you know, plant, plant, plant yourself and grow in that environment and be the best you can be in that environment. I think that's the biggest piece and not worried about looking at, once again, checking somebody else's pockets or worried about, 
because I played against this guy in AAU or in high school, and he's going there. I should be going there too. It doesn't always equal up to that, you know. Uh, maybe maybe one coach saw you on a good day and saw him on a bad day, or vice versa, and they like that kid over you a little bit better. But right. I don't. You shouldn't you shouldn't get discouraged by it at all, and let and don't let it be the end of all be all. Um, you know, because like I said, it's been it's been many a guys that I mean even. You know, you look at the the, the Last Dance documentary. You talking about Robin and 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 Pippen, right. both both of them were NAIA players. Yep. You know, and, and so you know we've had a lot of good guys and and high caliber players that are that are in the highest of the highest level right now that didn't go to the big time schools. You know, they were low Division One, Division Two. Um, you know, they had different paths, and we all have different paths. But just just be a star in your role and plant your seed wherever you go. And don't be consumed with someone else's thought of what you should do, you know? Yeah. I know, I know uh, we always talk about on these calls about the HBCU environment and how mm -hmm. there's much difference and much, you know, <laughs> as Carlos always says, it's much more nurturing uh, for, our, for our young black males. And they've had a lot of studies that I read, uh, you know, that, that identify when young black males go play for African-American coaches you know, the graduation rate is much higher, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Things like that. And those are always the things that I try to get through to parents. Um, you know, not that, not that it, you just, that you have to go that route because right. of those statistics, but it's always something that I feel like kind of gets overlooked. Um, you know, talk about the HBCU environment down there uh, in St. Louis, which I'm a big time Cardinals fan too, by the way. Okay. Uh, so I'm in the city all the time down there. Uh, you know, Nelson got mad at me the other day. I know he's a Yankees guy or Mets guy or whatever, man, but I had my Cardinals gear on the other day. So, you know, he gave me some hell about that. But <laughs> Doing interviews about... <laughs> with, his, with his Cardinals stuff on. That's right, baby. Represent. Uh, well, talk, talk about the HBCU environment that you guys have. I mean, you know, you know like you mentioned, Lincoln, which I've, you know, I grew up in Moberly. Uh, right outside of Columbia, so I'm really familiar with all of these areas. Right. Talk about your HBCU environment down there in St. Louis and what it's like for kids and campus life and, and things like that. Well, you know, I I am a um, – my, in my immediate family, I'm the only member that did not attend an HBCU. Uh, my mother, my father, my brother, uh, my well, two of my first cousins, they all, they all went to HBCUs. I was the only one that did not. Uh, but – I actually ended up working at the HBCU for a year, um, which actually helped me get the job out here. And the environment is different. I mean, and with not having football, um, you know, with us being the 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 flagship sport, so to speak, on campus, you know, we it's it's a different it's different feel for sure, especially during that homecoming week. Right. Uh, you know, that week it actually starts the Friday before. Um, and it's just has something to do with some type of festivity going on each and every night. You know, we're and we're on the smaller end uh, um, from a from a population standpoint. Uh, but I've been to some of the bigger ones as well. But we have a great feel. You know, our environment is very intimate. Um, that's the one thing about our school, you know, our closeness. Um, and, and like I said, the intimacy of our environment. I think everyone feels like they 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 are truly a part of a, just a just a big family. Um, you know, we we've had we've had um, our, our previous president. Um, you know, he was he was very accessible when he would walk walk the um, the yard and things of that nature, and the students would just walk up to him and have conversations with him, and he encouraged that. And I think that was a, just a trickling effect all the way down throughout our university, and to this day, you know, very everyone's very accessible. You know, open door policy for sure, or you can just come in and talk to talk to a professor or talk to a coach or talk to an administrator, things of that nature. Um, and they get to know you. They get to know you by name and not just by a number. Um, and I and I think that that carries a lot of weight for the student as well as for 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 the for the faculty and staff. Because um, right. again, you cultivate and you build those relationships that are that are everlasting. They're just not right here during this particular time while you're in school or while we're at that workplace. Um, you develop relationships with with students that when when they get their promotion or their next big job or something happens big in their family, like like they they respond, but they reach out to you. Um, and that means a great deal to that. That lets you know that you have, you have been a part of their journey and you've, you've touched them in some capacity that, that they felt like, um, 
they want to keep you in their life. And that's, a, that's, I mean, that's the whole purpose of it all, to be honest with you, with higher education. And even with coaching, like at the end of the day, you know, it takes a village and we're just another pillar of the village to help um, raise, help continue to raise these young men and young women um, so they can be productive citizens in the world. Um, and that's, that's the main thing. Like the environment is, like I said, the closeness. And for us, we're the only HBCU in our league. So a lot of right. people, a lot of people hate coming to, to, to our gym. Um, yeah. and, playing, and playing in the hornet's nest, um, especially when we would have um, – we had a drum line and they would be in there, but we have a DJ doing our game. So, you know, he, he tends to play the right song at the right time to get right. the crowd to be what we need them to be. Um, yeah. And, you know, and our guys really feed off of that and that energy. And like I said, it's, it's something that everyone should, should have a chance to experience, whether you attend the university or not just have a chance to experience uh, going to an environment of, of a game day at HBCU, whether it be um, football, basketball, whatever it may be, as well as maybe attending a function, a, a step show, uh, something that, that, that you wouldn't normally see or you wouldn't think you would have the chance to see at another university. Um, I, I believe that, like I said, that closeness and that togetherness is, is, is cultivating and developed every day simply because – um, in our situation, we're accessible. Um, you know, you walk to the cab, uh, we in the cafeteria doing the, doing the lunch hour with the students, and it's nothing for us to be in there for like an hour just just having a conversation, you know, and, and kids coming to talk to us and joke with us and then, you know, having the gym open and doing intramurals and being intramurals and being part of that. Um, you know, once again, it's just a it's just a family oriented environment. That's great, man. I mean, uh you know, I think that the culture of everything, with everything we got going on in the world and everything that's happening, uh, I think that it's important that we uh, try to steer people back to that environment um, as much as we can. Um, you know, kids, kids just want to play. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for me, you know, even at the high school level, you know, kids just want to play. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, kids, and, you know, a lot of these kids, this is their only outlet. Um, you know, to get away from whatever home situations they have. Uh, so going to a nurturing environment like that, you know, it turns you into the man that you, you're going to become. And then, you you know, likely get back to your community uh, that way. And you learn the, the foundation of what you're supposed to learn. So, uh, Coach uh, Nelson, you got anything you want to uh, run by, Coach? You, or you guys already had your conversation? Or you, yeah, you I had my conversation with the brother. Brother Man <laughs> right. is uh, – we – we have a lot of things in common uh, besides those Lakers and and, and <laughs> we, got, we got the Yankees too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Yankees fan from far. All right, but me and you uh, have Mo, Mo Cheeks. Uh, yes. We we got Damn. that because uh, he was a terrific player. He should be a head coach right now in the NBA too. By the he way, he should. He should. Yeah. He should. Yeah. That's so, a whole. But, uh, so should. Uh, uh, Jason Kidd, so a uh, couple of them should be head coaches, yeah. but I think Jason Kidd's just waiting patiently on something to go down out there in LA before he uh, before he takes over. I think he I think he had an ulterior motive for that spot, but and, and uh, Mark was was Mark uh, he was with the he was with the Knicks for a long time, and he Jackson Mark Jackson, Jackson. Mark Jackson. Yeah, who built the who built those Warriors out there. Right. Yeah, he built those warriors up out there, and then they asked him for whatever reason. But you know, hey, it's always politics involved. In, in hey, coach. Yes, this sir. Is what, what what I was saying about uh, Cascade Sports and our network, when we don't own these platforms and own these teams, we it's that's why HBCUs were in. Uh, came about because we couldn't go to those universities mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what have you, and. Hopefully that, uh, as we talked about uh, before uh, Coach Glasgow got on, uh, and I said your whole conversation had a string uh, that was going through about building uh, skill sets and what have you. Hopefully, uh, if you're not doing it now in the future, talk to the kids about be, being their own boss, being their own. Uh, building their own because we can never reach the heights that we want to reach as African Americans unless we can create our own narrative. Right. And and I think that's very important. And I think HBCUs uh, 
they tend to lead in that direction. Uh, not necessarily as being, a, and, and even more so, bringing a little bit of politics into it in the Trump era. Yes. You have some closing statements? Well, first off, like I said, I want to thank you both for having me on here. Um, it, it's been a great, it's been a great experience, great conversation. Hopefully, we can we can continue to to stay in culture, stay in touch, and cultivate relationships. And um, and if anything that I can do um, going forward and, and assist in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, every day, we're, we're we're I tell my guys every day we got to try to be better, to be better today than we were yesterday. And I think when we continue to have conversations and continue to educate each other, um, every day is a day to learn to get better. And that's every day that, that um, you, you can strengthen your mind. And like you said, strengthen your, your, who you are as an individual. Um, and that's, that's, and one thing that, that I'm I, about competitiveness that I always say, we talk about, you know, one of my coaches told me that he thought I was one of the most competitive people that he ever met in his life. Um, and that doesn't come from me. You know, that comes from my mother. Um, you know, she was a super, super competitive woman. Um, What's her she, name? Her name is Richie Carroll. Um, Richie Carroll, happy belated Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you much. And so she, she was, she was one of four. She was, she was the only girl of four, of four, of four, of four children, and she, she was the second youngest. Um, but you know, being around three brothers, uh, you know, she was very competitive in the things that she wanted in, in and out of life. And she taught me and my brother to be very, very competitive. And, and I hate losing. I hate losing anything. Uh, I hate losing more than I love winning. Um, and I try to instill some of that in our guys. And just because you lose, you only lose when you don't learn the lesson. Right. Uh, you got to make sure that you continue to learn the lessons that are involved when the outcome doesn't go your particular way. Um, but just, just that's, that's, that's where I get my drive and everything from because of her and what she's instilled in myself and my brother. And, and I just run with it each and every day. And like I said, I appreciate y'all for having me on. And, and um, I would like for us to continue this going forward. And, and like I said, anything I can do to help, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Coach Glasgow, what's your closing comments? As always, Coach, I always like to thank you for your time, man. I know, um, you know, you've got lots of things going on, trying to close out the school year and, you know, get your exit strategies and all that stuff together for guys. And, you know, uh, I appreciate you being on. I do look forward to uh, building up a relationship with you, man, because, you know, I'll have uh, some competitive high academic kids coming out of Lincoln um, every year. So, you know, anything you need, you know, uh, we'll exchange numbers after after the interview. Anything you need, anything you're looking for, uh, if I can help you out in any way, please let me know. And uh, whenever you in town, uh, let me know you on your way, man, and uh, we'll, we'll get together, you know, talk yeah. shop and have a couple cold ones and uh, eat, eat some Q and, you know, and, and hopefully, man, you know, I can send, send some quality kids your way, man, and you, you guys can keep, obviously, uh, what you already have built there and keep a winning culture, man, and, you know, I'll be able to shoot down and catch a Cardinals game, man, catch some of the kids Definitely. playing at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, as when uh, we close, uh, my saying is when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself.